Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everybody to this, to today's doctoral thesis defense. And of course, a particular welcome to the doctoral candidate, Professor Lins Gerner Andersen. And also a particular welcome to the two official opponents, Professor Horch Santos from Universitetet i Tromsø, Norges Arktiske Universitet, and Professor Axel Temming from uh, Universitet Hamburg. And also a warm welcome uh, to Professor Dr. Technicus Andy Visser, who has stepped in uh, substituting today for Professor Brian McKenzie as the chairman of the assessment committee. My name is uh, Rasmus Larsen, I'm the university provost and I'll be the chairman of the proceedings today. The doctoral thesis of today is entitled The Dynamics of Gastric Evacuation in Predatory Fish a mechanistic model of gastric evacuation, development, and application in fish and fishery biology. It was handed in to the university on October 15th, 2021, and subsequently uh, an assessment committee was appointed by, the assessment committee was appointed by the academic council. Now the assessment committee have already done part of that work in preparing uh, uh, an assessment of the thesis to the Academic Council and the Academic Council accepted the thesis for defense on October 27, uh, 2022. And today uh, we have uh, the final uh, part of the proceedings, namely the defense proceedings. And the defense proceedings will go as follows. After this small introduction, the doctoral candidate will present his thesis in a lecture of approximately 30 minutes. And um, thereafter, we'll have a small break. And after the break, the opponents will start a scientific discussion with the candidate. And when the opponents have exhausted their list of questions and received satisfactory answers, there will be the opportunity also for questions ex auditorio. Now, if there are somebody in the auditorium that would like to ask uh, a question, they should register with me during the small break after the lecture. The defense proceedings will be live streamed for the benefit of those who are not able to be physically present today and recorded for documentation and for the benefit of those that are not able to attend at all today. With this, I would like to end the introduction and invite Professor Nils Gerner Andersen to take the podium to give a lecture over his thesis. So please, Nils. Thank you for your nice words, uh, Rasmus. And uh, uh, it's ha I'm happy to see so many of you here today. And uh, honored committee. As uh, Rasmus uh, mentioned, the title is here, so I don't need to repeat it. And I'll start slide straight on. Uh, biologists have long uh, uh, recognized the importance of uh, species uh, interactions in terms of uh, food competition and uh, predation for the uh, dynamics of uh, fish communities and also potentially for entire ecosystems through uh, trophic cascading uh, effects down the food web. So, if we want uh, a sustainable management of our fisheries, then we need accurate estimates of predation rates. Uh, 
and uh, uh, to, to, to account for the removal of fish, not only uh, by the fisheries, but also by uh, fi uh, fish-eating predators. That is, or uh, forms a part of, the, of what we today call, are calling uh, the uh, ecosystem approach to fisheries management. And multi-species model are used uh, for that uh, purpose. And if you see the first figure here, we have the food web uh, uh, as used by the uh, North Sea a multi-species uh, 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 group. And uh, the lines between the entities here uh, uh, represent by their sickness, the fishing rates and uh, predation rates. And uh, predation rates, they can't be uh, observed directly in the sea. So instead, the uh, amount and the composition of the prey in sample stomachs, predator stomachs, are used together with a gastric evacuation model to, uh, to estimate uh, uh, those predation rates. The principle uh, of estimating this uh, predation rate uh, can be explained using this figure here. You see a couple of uh, predator individuals that, uh, that are observed uh, through a, a short period. And if you are able to look into their stomachs, you could, uh, you could uh, see the dynamics of uh, the amount of uh, prey in the stomachs going up uh, at food intake and gradually declining again uh, uh, due to uh, digestion and evacuation of the ingested, uh, and evacuation of the ingested prey. And over a long period, uh, the amount that, is, uh, is, that enters the fish through in intake will be the same as the amount that leaves the stomach through uh, the evacuation. Uh, so if we sample uh, the uh, uh, stomachs uh, representatively over the uh, uh, entire predator population and over time. And we transform these uh, snapshots of, uh, of, uh, of the content of uh, the, the stomach contents into, into the current evacuation rates. Then the average of these uh, current evacuation rates uh, uh, can be considered the average of uh, of uh, the food consumption rate. So that's a rationale behind uh, estimating uh, food consumption rates. A huge uh, amount of effort, internationally coordinated effort, has been thrown into sampling of stomachs and uh, to uh, analyzing the, uh, the contents in lab. In con contrast to that, uh, studies on evacuation rates has been more sporadic and uncoordinated, and as a result, the, the, the estimates uh, obtained by use of these uh, uh, different evacuation models uh, are quite dis or was quite dis disparate, as you can see here in the, the figure uh, compiled by uh, Hansen and Allied, where you see the, the annual uh, food consumption uh, rate of uh, North Sea cuts by age group of cod, and uh, they are all depicted uh, relatively to one of the measures, the so-called ISIS uh, standard method. And what you see here is uh, quite considerable differences in, in the estimated uh, rations, and that is, of course, uh, not uh, satisfactory at all. So, uh, so uh, and that was actually my motivation for going into to in detail with the uh, with, uh, gastric equation and the processes behind that. So I will, uh, I will uh, uh, explain the model development and, uh, the, its, and the uh, predictions of the model. And then uh, I will, uh, in brief, uh, present uh, applications of the model. We have already been into this average food consu consumption rate, but the model can also be used to, uh, to estimate unbiased uh, diet composition for different purposes. Uh, it can uh, is useful for gaining information about, uh, about the predator-prey interaction on a local scale to get more mechanistic understanding of that, which is important if we want to scale from local, uh, local interactions to uh, population level. Uh, 
And finally, the model can be used to, uh, to quantify the assimilative capacity uh, of predatory fish, which has uh, importance for uh, formulation of uh, functional response models. We go to the model development, and uh, we need in advance some observation uh, to, to establish a model so it's not developed out of the blue. And uh, these observations should include the effects of the major predictor variables. And uh, here it's meal size, predator size, temperature, and different prey characteristics. And uh, then the model is established using this information together with theory and uh, knowledge about the involved processes. Uh, and finally, the model is, uh, is uh, challenged with its predictions using a, a, a more, uh, more complex uh, feeding uh, situations that is relevant for, for the situations out in the, in the field. A basic typical evacuation experiment is performed by, by keeping a, a number of predators, feed them a specific meal, and then at different predetermined times after uh, the intake, uh, 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 predators, uh, predators are sampled, uh, their stomachs are recovered either by killing the fish or by performing a gastric lavage, that is introducing salt water into the stomach, which makes the fish regurgitate the content that can be uh, sampled in a, in, a, in a sieve, and then the excess water is removed, and uh, the stomach content is uh, weighed, or you can do other measurements according to the purpose with your experiments. Here is an example on uh, safe fed uh, meals of uh, four sand eel, and you see the progression of uh, digestion of these sand eel through time after intake, and in the lower right, you see uh, you see uh, uh, obtained data for an experiment with uh, declining uh, amounts of stomach contents uh, that describes the evacuation rates and uh, a curve can be fitted possibly with uh, confidence uh, limits like here. Then we come to the, the predictor variables. Uh, the stomach content should, uh, should uh, be able to uh, predict evacuation rate of the current content which means independently of meal size. And uh, through a number of experiments, it has been shown that the square root function with a constant parameter uh, rho here uh, does that job. And uh, it also, it's also able to, uh, to uh, predict evacuation rate of a specific meal, irrespective uh, of whether it's, uh, it's composed of one large or a number of smaller prey. And that uh, that uh, gives two indications. First, that, uh, that the uh, uh, digestive processes are going on on the, on the common surface of the food bolus, not the total surface of each individual prey. And also that the square root function uh, uh, describes the evacuation uh, independently of the, the con configuration of the prey. It's uh, in insensitive to, to the configuration, and that's important for the model development later on. Then we have fixed the cause of evacuation, and we will look into the, to quantifying uh, the, uh, the effects of uh, the other major variables. And the first one here is predator size, and again, uh, from a, a lot of different experiments, we find that uh, 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 the evacuation rate can be described by a power function of the length of the predator. The temperature relationship is uh, quite complex. However, in the central part of the temperature range uh, of a predator, it can be described by a simple exponential. Evacuation rates is uh, 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 inversely or almost inversely uh, related to the energy content or energy density of the prey, uh, possibly because of the, the negative feedback mechanisms from the intestine that regulate the flow of energy through the stomach. 
So uh, we have uh, quantified the, 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 the effect of the different uh, uh, predictor variables. So we can expand this rate parameter rho into functions of these. And we, uh, we, uh, okay. we end up with a, a prefactor here, rho zero. And uh, this is uh, uh, almost the same for fish prey, though in the extremes from a, from a herring, from, from a fragile he he herring or a sand eel to robust uh, flatfish like dab here. There are a little difference, although it's significant but small. With the needed observations in place, we will uh, construct the, the model and uh, it's, as mentioned, a surface process and previous attempts to, to do a, a geometric abstraction of the content uh, using uh, the prey geometry showed to be too complex and inconsistent. So uh, saluting the principle of parsimony, uh, the shape of the stomach of a predatory fish is used instead. It can be characterized by a, a cylinder, straight cylinder for most of uh, the predatory fish, like caught here to the right, but uh, also curved to some extent in uh, a flat fish like turbot here to the left, uh, due to the uh, limited body cavity of, uh, of a flat fish. So, a single uh, homogeneous prey in a stomach uh, can be presented by a, a cylinder with the length of the prey and uh, the radius is determined by the weight equal volume of the prey and uh, the digestive processes are going on on the uh, curved side of this cylinder and uh, a, a layer of uh, sickness delta is uh, uh, peeled off the stomach uh, per time unit so we can write up a very simple uh, model for that. Uh, but it's a little cumbersome to use areas, so we, we are using uh, uh, masses instead. And of course, we use uh, the square root function of, of the current mass. Uh, and we know that uh, the rate parameter rho here is a constant. Here, and it, it is, uh, it is uh, yeah, uh, insensitive, insensitive to the configuration of the prey. So the consequence is that delta, the thickness of this uh, peeled off layer, it must be inversely related to the square root of the length of the prey. And that can be described by simple surface considerations together with the peristaltic movements of, uh, of the stomach and also predicting uh, the uh, effect of uh, predator size, uh, simple uh, surface considerations, but, uh, together with uh, the mass-specific uh, secretion rates of the glands, can, uh, can, uh, yeah, that can predict uh, values of, of the power similar to, to what we obtained uh, empirically through the experiments. Fish are uh, considered homogeneous with regard to to uh, the energy density and to the resistance to the digestive processes. Uh, but obviously, uh, prey that are import, uh, crustacean prey that are important for predators uh, also, uh, they are evidently uh, heterogeneous with regard to resistance due to their, uh, high, uh, their robust exoskeletons. So uh, in the model, a uh, layer of uh, higher uh, resistances just uh, put outside the cylinder. And uh, the result is a, a two-stage model with uh, an initial slow evacuation rate. And then when the exoskeleton cracks and the inner parts are exposed to the digestive processes uh, in the stomach, then we have a fast digestion or a faster digestion at least. Until now, we have only been uh, so I have only been talking about uh, one prey type in the stomach. If you have three different prey types like here, then uh, each, prey type, uh, each prey is still uh, considered a cylinder. Uh, but they are also put together into a common food bolus. So the entire uh, surface of each of the prey is not uh, exposed to the digestive processes. 
uh, and it's, it's uh, probably a quite a complicated uh, configuration here. So here we really needed a simplification. And the simplification uh, of this model here is that, uh, that uh, the surfaces of each of the cylinders is equally scaled down to the restricted uh, surface of the uh, common food bolus. Having done that, we just need to, uh, to modulate the evacuation rate by the current uh, energy density of the chime that is evacuated uh, into the intestine. And uh, this is simple. Uh, the average of the energy densities of the prey uh, weighted by their respective evacuation rates. And that leaves us now with a, a, a full model. So now we will uh, test the model with a different, more complex uh, situation. Mixed meal composed of two plate types where uh, the size, resistance, energy density, and uh, the shape of the prey differ. And uh, a situation with two consecu some consecutive meals. And finally, uh, how the model uh, predicts uh, uh, the evacuation of crustacean prey irrespective of, uh, of the, the, the prey size in a specific meal or uh, irrespective of meal size. The first one here is a mixed meal where the prey size differ uh, in that uh, we have one large sand eel together with four smaller sand eel. And we see the, uh, the, the, the remaining uh, parts of the, uh, the total, uh, the total uh, stomach content as well as th that of the two prey types. And you see here in the bottom panel the remaining fraction of uh, a small sand eel and a nice uh, prediction by the model. So its predictions is not fitting here. We have the basic rates and then we let the model uh, predict. And uh, you should, uh, in the following, you should uh, focus especially on the lower panel because that's uh, uh, the most sensitive measure of uh, the model performance. And here are two competing model models. They are both mass-based with regard to allocation uh, uh, of evacuation to the two uh, prey rather than the surface considerations of the cylinder model. And further, they differ in the way they treat, uh, uh, treat the two, two prey character, uh, char characters, uh, energy density and uh, resistance to, uh, to, to, the, to the digestive processes. Here, the prey resistance uh, differ, and you have, where you have one sand eel together with uh, three much more resistant uh, brown shrimp, and we have the, exactly the same picture. And also, uh, when the prey Two prey types differ by the energy content. We have a situation with a lean herring together with a fat spread, fat to cut. And you see the same picture, though one of the mass bait models, model, models also perform well here. It was suggested that the model with its uh, simple surface considerations uh, would, not, would fail uh, predictions when the shape of the prey differs uh, significantly. And what can be more, more, more different than cylindrical uh, sand eel together with a flatfish at that in this case here. So we uh, expanded the, the cylinder model to account for the larger surface contribution of, uh, of uh, DAP. And uh, what you see here in the bottom panel, uh, panel is that the development of the fraction of DAP is too slow because uh, uh, according to, to the model, the, the evacuation rate is faster. In con contrast to that, the original cylinder uh, seemed to, to, uh, to perform well here. So we don't need to, uh, to, to, to expand it. So it's obviously quite robust to differences in... Uh, in, uh, in, oh, in the shape of the prey. Then we have the, the situation with two consecutive meals. Uh, it's composed of two sand eel fed uh, 12 hours apart. And uh, you see the, uh, the, uh, the, the predictions by the cylinder, uh, cylinder model. Seems nice. 
while the mass-based models uh, over and, and uh, underestimate the evacuation of the two, two meals. And uh, the same is actually the case here in a, a, from a literature where the, the data were tabulated, so I was able to, to also uh, run the model on, on these data here, and you have exactly the same, uh, uh, the same situation that the mass model or, or an underestimates, while the cylinder model uh, seemed to, be a, 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 to, to do a good job here. Finally, the, 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 models, uh, the model's prediction of, uh, of uh, a, a meal composed of uh, either one uh, uh, large uh, swimming crab or two smaller ones uh, with the same parameter values, uh, it, it predicts equally well the two situations. And the same, it, it, it uh, predicts uh, the, the equation of a bound shrimp uh, irrespective of, uh, of uh, the meal size just in the same way as the simple model does on, on fish prey. So, then we have uh, challenged the model. It, it seems to be quite uh, uh, robust and, uh, and uh, it should prove to be a, 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 a good tool for, for estimating food consumption rates of predatory fish uh, for use in, uh, in multi-species models. Then we come to other applications. Here, the unbiased diet composition, uh, the total uh, the food consumption rate of uh, freshwater fish and also marine mammals and uh, birds are estimated by use of a bionetics <coughs> model where the, all the different energy requiring processes and losses are summed up to the consumption rate or the energy requirement. It's an energy unit. So uh, and we need prey-specific uh, mass consumption rates in, in multi-species uh, contexts. Uh, so stomach concentrate are used as well, uh, together with the energy density of uh, the prey. And so we get the composition that is upscaled to the energy requirement. And then uh, using the energy density again of the prey, we, we get what we want, uh, the prey-specific mass consumption rates. Uh, however, the composition of prey in the stomachs is not necessarily the same as in the diet because of differential evacuation of the prey. So we, here we also need an evacuation model to, uh, to compensate for that. Uh, and, uh, oh. So yeah. doing so, we should, we, we should get an undiased diet. If you are not doing that, we, we risk uh, or may risk uh, severe bias in the diet composition. And uh, an example on that is uh, a study on, uh, on harbor peppers. Uh, here, the prey composition is obtained from uh, the prey composition yeah, is obtained from uh, the four stomach. And uh, in the four stomach, almost all uh, fish prey are represented by otoliths because the, the, the uh, evacuation of uh, the soft parts uh, go so fast. So the otoliths are, are, are accumulating in the, in the four stomach. However, uh, the uh, residence time of those otoliths in the four stomach is uh, positively related to the size of the, of the, of the otoliths. And uh, the longer the stay, the higher the probability to, uh, to observe an otolith in, in the stomach. So we have to compensate for that. This is very much a parallel to, 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 to the predatory fish, uh, and uh, it showed that the it was showed that the square root function of the cylinder model uh, can relate the the residence time to the the, the, the stay the residence to, to the otolith size, of course. And uh, here we see an example from the Western Baltic Sea. Uh, to the left, we have the prey composition uh, uncorrected, and you see that uh, the two gadwires, cod and whiting, are comprising 90% of the diets. Uh, correcting for the, the residence time, uh, they only, only amount to around 50%, so uh, a number of other uh, fish prey becomes uh, important also. And that is, uh, of course, relevant if you are looking into the habitat quality of uh, 
have a purpose, or in a multi-species context, uh, if you want to, to, to estimate the, the predation rate of, uh, of uh, have a purpose. The evacuation model can also be used to estimate the ingestion times of the prey observed in the stomach by calculating the, the weight of the, uh, of the, uh, of the prey to back time him cast the weight to, to its uh, original uh, 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 weight, body weight. And uh, this, uh, this has been uh, utilized in, uh, in a number of, uh, of, uh, of uh, small scale uh, uh, studies on uh, species interactions. And here is an example from uh, the Bornhorn Basin, where uh, we uh, we uh, try to understand uh, the, the interaction uh, between cord and spreads uh, by examining the, the dial, vert uh, dial vertical distribution and the species uh, interaction and identifying uh, the drivers here. The water column can be characterized uh, by a top layer, homogeneous top layer, with uh, low temperatures and high uh, oxygen levels, and a bottom layer with a combined halo and thermocline that, uh, where the temperature is increasing and the oxygen level is decreasing towards the bottom. And uh, we used uh, sample cuts or the stomachs from, from sample cuts to estimate uh, uh, the ingestion times and then the dial uh, dynamics of, uh, of uh, predation risk of, of the spreads. And we, uh, we used uh, hydroacoustics to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to examine the vertical uh, distribution dy dynamics of the two uh, species. And uh, you see the results from the, from the hydroacoustics here with uh, ascents and des descents of uh, the two species, uh, day and night and dusk and dawn. And uh, using the, the, the stomach contents and, and the evacuation model, you see here the distribution uh, of predation risk uh, over, over, over day and nights here for of, uh, of spreads. And uh, taking into consideration the precision of the estimated intake uh, in distant times, uh, then 90% uh, uh, of 90% of, of the spreads uh, is, uh, is uh, in, ingested during dusk and dawn in those uh, short time intervals, 10% during night, and only one uh, spread uh, at, at daytime. Uh, and uh, the observed dynamics uh, could be explained by simple fitness optimization uh, using uh, bionetics together with trade-off be be between those different uh, uh, those different uh, drivers, the, all the, the heterographic ones, plus predation risk. And if we didn't have the predation risk into the picture, then uh, the result was, would be more inferences or pure speculations rather than, than firm, uh, firm conclusions. So here, uh, the model has uh, used its value in, in, in these uh, ex examining uh, uh, local uh, uh, predator-prey dynamics. The feeding rate of uh, predator fish uh, as a function of uh, the density of, uh, of prey in the environment uh, is considered limited by the uh, assimilative and uh, digestive uh, uh, capacity of the fish rather than, uh, than uh, the encounter rate. So formulating fu function response here, the consumed prey versus the encounter prey uh, the, upper, the upper ceiling of this uh, curve uh, is determined by the assimilative capacity. And uh, this capacity is uh, estimated in, typically estimated in uh, lab experiments on well-fed predators that, uh, that are fed over a long time period to satiation. However, in the lab experiments, uh, starved predators with depleted reserves uh, are binge feeding at levels far about this uh, sustained capacity uh, and possibly because of an uh, adaptive response to highly variability in the feeding conditions in, in the wilds. Uh, 
and uh, and uh, as uh, to take advantage of uh, of uh, feeding policies, policies of uh, of plenty of, of food. Uh, if that's a common phenomenon, then uh, then this uh, function response curve formula here with, with the ceiling is an incomplete description of uh, of the function re response. Uh, however, uh, the uh, this uh, binge feeding hasn't been uh, estimated uh, really in in the field, but uh, using uh, the maximum stomach contents. Uh, of, of sample stomachs together with a, a gastric equation model should enable uh, a, 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 the estimation of, of this, uh, this uh, capacity. And we did that for, for cod in a barren sea. And uh, here you have the, a lot of uh, stomach samples. And you see the total stomach contents in a stomach. Uh, as, a, as a function of uh, total bottle length, they are, they are bent into one centimeter length group. And uh, using the upper marginal percentile uh, of, uh, of the distributions here, you, you uh, get an, a, a, a description of uh, the, the stomach content that is associated with, with binge feeding. And uh, using the cylinder model, model we, uh, we can uh, estimate this, we are calling it the episodic capacity, and it's far above the sustained capacity. Uh, the sustained capacity is obtained from a uh, from, uh, from, uh, cut, fed, uh, well-fed cut, uh, fed to, uh, to, uh, to satiation over a long time, Norwegian data from Dublin. Yeah. And uh, what you also see here is that uh, the factorial scope that is the, the ratio of episodic to the, the sustained capacity uh, is uh, increasing with, uh, with, uh, with, with the body size of the cuts. And uh, this can be explained by, or might be explained by increasing variability in feeding opportunity with increasing uh, predator size and also by increasing relative energy reserves and the ability to, 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 to establish the, uh, the energy reserves with increasing uh, body size. Uh, similar results have been obtained for whiting in the uh, North Sea. And there is another, an additional point here, that's that uh, the, the condition of the sample cuts indicated that uh, most of the population would exert uh, binge feeding if uh, they, they had the opportunity to do so. So it's possibly uh, uh, an important part of, uh, of, of the life of uh, the fish out there. And uh, maybe the, the functional model should, should be, uh, be revised according to that. Uh, yes. So I just missed to do a summary. And we have established a mechanistic model. It should prove, uh, prove useful to, to estimate food consumption rates. Uh, and uh, only a few experiments are needed to parameterize the model to, uh, to other uh, predator and, and prey species. Uh, the model uh, enables insight into the, into the species attention on a, on a local scale which can, is important if we, if we want uh, an, an, an alternative to, to, to those large surveys where we sample a lot of uh, stomachs, maybe an, a better uh, way of doing it eventually is to, to be wiser about uh, the, the local predator-prey interaction and then scale to po population level. The uh, assimilative capacity of the wild fish can be qu quantified, and uh, maybe that should, uh, that should uh, open up for establishing uh, more reliable uh, functional response models. Uh, on the model itself, uh, future studies should focus on uh, other invertebrate uh, types than, uh, than uh, crustaceans. Uh, mollusks, uh, echinoderms, and polychaetes also form uh, important prey for some of the uh, predators. And uh, we don't know about the limitation of the model with regard to very small prey size or a, a large number of, uh, of uh, prey in the stomach. So that should be, 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 uh, be, be examined as well. 
and the complex uh, temperature function calls for more study in, uh, into high and low temperatures and also uh, low oxygen levels uh, in, uh, in the water. And the uh, high temperature and the uh, low uh, oxygen levels uh, is tightly coupled to the aerobic scope of, uh, of fish. So uh, both uh, the recursion model and uh, physiological frameworks would benefit if uh, the model wa was integrated into to, to, to such uh, frameworks. So I will uh, thank my co-authors uh, for, for fun time with uh, work and uh, writing papers, uh, the technical assistance in Hirtals for help with uh, with the acquisition of, uh, of uh, biological materials uh, from the sea. And uh, my section leaders uh, during my, my, my employment here at DTU Aqua. And uh, thanks for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Nils. Uh, and now, as announced, we will have uh, a small break and we'll uh, reconvene in here in five minutes. And uh, if there are questions ex auditorio, uh, please register. We'll be in, uh, in that short break. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay. So, uh, the extended five minute break is now over. And we can begin the defense proceedings again. And as you can see, I have invited the two opponents uh, to the podium, uh, Professor Santos, Santos and Pro Professor uh, Temming, have together prepared a series of uh, questions and discussion points uh, that would, they would like to present to the doctoral candidate. And we have agreed that uh, Professor Santos will begin. Good afternoon, uh, dear audience, dear candidate. Thank you. It's really a pleasure to be here today. I can say my name in the name of Axel. Uh, we have been preparing this day now for months. Um, from the first time we, we got this, this thesis to read. It was good reading. And... Um, I was very impressed and shocked and honored when I saw uh, Malcolm Jobling's name and my name in the acknowledgments. It was very good to know that we contributed or motivated you to do some nice work. Um, it's an honor and it's a weight on us. I'm sure uh, Malcolm would like to be here, but he's now retired. He does not travel. Uh, he's still a workaholic. He goes every day to office at midnight and works the, till one in the afternoon, um, but he's extremely keen to share and uh, he's still sharing his knowledge and you would be very proud to know that some of his data uh, found its way here. So we have to send him a, uh, a copy of your thesis. You'll be delighted to see it. Um, your thesis was easy to read, and your presentation was, was, was easy to follow. Um, I don't know you. It was the first time I met you, I think, or... Yeah, yeah. wrote emails. Yes, probably. Many years ago. Many years ago. Now you yeah. invited me about some of the details with your experiments. I, I okay, was, yeah, good, good. But I must admire your perseverance. We have worked with this topic, you developed theory, uh, made experiments for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really impressive. You focused in the work, you maintained the network, you found the funding, and you managed to work along this line for many years. All these articles are now uh, reviewed, so there's not much we can tell about them. Um, but we have some small doubts, and I guess that what I and Axel are trying to get here is some generalizations yeah. and um, some speculations about what one can do in the future. Yes. You or a student of yours, what you can do to develop these, um, these uh, 
theory, this knowledge here. Okay, so I and Axel, we have prepared 12 questions. And um, so it's up to you. Uh, we hope you, you answer and you speculate and you Absolutely. entertain us. <laughs> and, uh, but the time limit is um, six hours, okay? <laughs> Not more than that. I need, I need a chair. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You have to stand. You have to stand. Um, in my university, I also have to stand. Okay. And that makes the defenses very short. <laughs> okay. So uh, we'll start, we divided the work among us yeah. and um, between us. So uh, I will ask one question and then uh, Axel hops in and all that. Um, so um, to begin with, uh, the, our approach is from the sea, from the hook to the plate. You know, we start with the uh, wet stuff yeah. and then we go to the theoretical stuff and all that. So um, I've heard, I hear that you are a keen fisherman, a uh, keen angler. Yeah, that's right. Yes, and that's, I, I guess, that you were catching a fish. Yes, yes. But you don't give much detail about the practical uh, work in the lab and all that. So my question is, um, what, how, well, I don't want all the detail, you know, of course, but how do you think you contributed to the advancement of these lab experiments of either the design or the way you, you, you treat the fish or the fish welfare? Do you think you have contributed uh, in that part? Uh, not, not in the general housekeeping of the fish, I think uh, I haven't. Of course, the, 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 the acclimatization, or, or acclimatization of, of fish and so on, maybe, I, I don't know I contributed when I read other papers, I think they also, in general, uh, do more or less the same. So it's probably more in the experiments. Mm. I mean, could, could they contribute more? You know, there's one, one, one thing, and that's, uh, I, I have been so lucky that I could catch a lot of fish and also a lot of prey. So I could really uh, sort. Uh, so, so in experiments, I have had a very uh, small variation in predator size, and also in uh, the size uh, and condi condition of uh, of uh, the prey. So, but I, I don't know if it's my contribution or just because I'm lucky to yeah, to, yeah. to have so good opportunities opportunities uh, as I had in in Yertef because it's a, a very good location for for doing experiments. Good, good uh, salt water uh, coming in directly in. Uh, uh, short trips, uh, short uh, fishing trips to to, to catch mm. both uh, predators and, and prey. Uh, yeah. So it's more in, in the ex yeah, but also that also feed into the experiments. But be because because of uh, this narrow, uh, uh, I, I can also have very narrow ranges of uh, of prey. For example, I could uh, sort out uh, the prey. In the, in the first place, in a given situation, I, I, I deter, determined the size of the prey, the weight of the prey. Mm -hmm. Then I sorted out a, a, a prey which was in, in a good, not too good, not too bad condition, as, and, uh, and I made length measures of that. And then I sorted quickly after length, and then I weighed uh, finally uh, those of the same length uh, that have the same uh, uh, body mass. So I, I got a, a quite homogeneous uh, yeah. bunch of prey for the experiments. So for example, that the energy density doesn't uh, differ too, too much. Yeah. And I think that's important. Yeah. That's uh, narrowed down the, 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 the variation in, in the experiments. Yeah. We, then, have, yeah. we have enough variation in the experiments. So it's very important. And I think you described that part well, at least in one of the papers, yeah, okay. where you go in, in detail yeah. into that. I was just wondering what new things we could, um, you know, for instance, now the, the requirements regarding fish welfare are different than they were when I was working with this topic 30 years ago. Uh, but I also stopped experiments uh, more or less before uh, the, the, all those restrictions. Yeah. That's uh, more, more like a problem with some of my uh, successors, like Ian down there. Yeah. So, yeah, so, uh, but my feeling is that a well-planned experiment spares fish. You know, if you have a good experiment, you don't have to use so much fish. 
and that contributes to the fish and that welfare. I also uh, took into yeah. to consideration. But I have very much been standing on your shoulders because I think your experimental design was yeah. a, a really a it worked, yeah. beneficial for me to, to read all your papers. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I made some pilot studies to see what yeah. was the minimum amount of fish yeah, I needed. Like around 16 or something, uh, something like, like that. Yeah, if yeah, I yeah. have 16, then I don't need 30 or 40 yeah, of them. Exactly, so, and I followed yeah. the same lines yeah. there. So that, at least I think that's a good way uh, to cont a contribution to well fish welfare. <laughs> don't bother 40 <laughs> other fishes. Okay, so, so yes, uh, that was interesting. So we were in the wet, in the wet part now. You bring the fish in, you weigh, and and, and suddenly you are again in, the, in, the, in front of your computer mm -hmm. and there you are fitting these statistical models to the data of the evacuation. So these curves that we saw and complex models with lots of... And um, I notice now, because I've been away from this field for many, many years, uh, that statistics and mathematics have developed a lot in the last 20, 30 years. How have you captured that development uh, so in, in, for instance, in the fit of complex models? Yes. Have you developed this? No, no, I have attempted to do it uh, simpler. Uh, so I don't think it's uh, very complicated uh, it, uh, statistically uh, when, when you treat the data, not at all. Uh, Axel and I, many years ago, we, uh, we uh, did the, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, iterative methods uh, for, for estimating uh, the parameters of the, of the general power model. And, uh, and that's the, the most complicated at all. The rest is very simple. Yeah. For example, uh, uh, letting the variation in the evacuation rate parameter for, for being, being, uh, being uh, dependent on the predator. So, so this row, this rate parameter, is a, is a, is a stochastic variable. Uh, that uh, tells us about the performance of that particular in individual, for example. Okay. It's very simple. It, I, it, I try to keep, uh, keep, uh, to keep it simple. Uh, not, uh, uh, there's no very complicated statistics uh, involved in that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but now and also uh, try to disentangle the, the effect. I think that's, that's the, the, the one of the major things. Uh, I, uh, the major challenge was to disentangle the effects of the different pred uh, predictor variables in the right way. Yeah, I but that's part of the success of the model. Yeah. Yeah. But statistics now allow us to be more precise yeah. in a, by using uh, models with different error distributions yeah. uh, and allow us to to way uh, to go and take conclusions that before were not possible in my time when we were using these uh, least squares approaches. Yeah. Now they have developed. You can do something that we could not do then, is to uh, mark each fish. Each fish is a subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, we use them as a mass, that any fish, yeah, yeah. but now we can mark in the model yeah, yeah. by using random effects. You can say, well, yeah. this chord number 15 yes. Is, yes. is the same individual in these old experiments. So we can really follow the individual variation. Yeah. Yeah. I did, I, but I didn't do that. But I could indirectly show that it was uh, the, the variation between uh, predators rather than the, than the prey in the, this uh, yeah. shape experiments by yeah. eliminating the time. So you yeah. can see that it was primarily the ability of the individual predators that, that, uh, that, uh, that yeah. contribute to the variance yeah. of the yeah. data rather than the, the variation in, in, in the, the prey. prey yeah. Yeah. Yes, because you, 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 you controlled very well the prey. But exactly, that's new, these new models allow us to see the variation between individual yeah. predators. Yeah. So that's a, a nice way to explore uh, the information in the data you have. So with the same data, but the newer and better techniques, you can extract more information. Yeah. And it would be good to, to, to repeat for, for one specific yeah. predator, repeat the same experiment yeah. again and yeah. again. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so so it's good uh, that uh, statistics have moved forward as well. And we have to follow. <laughs> it's a bit difficult sometimes, or many times. Okay, so uh, and, and, and nowadays we don't compare models based on the fit. It's more like on the, the strength of the evidence that each model gives and all that. So it, it has improved and, and, and we should uh, follow. Um, that is for now. I think these are my questions for now. 
And I think Axel is burning now to, to, to make some questions. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Is that, this is working? Okay. Um, yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity to, to be here. I'm, I'm really pleased. Uh, it's an honor. And I must say uh, first that I really congratulate you to your thesis, which was a pleasure to read. And it is, it is a very, an excellent summary. I think it makes some noise now. If you is it, shall I continue like this because it doesn't go away? Okay. Um, so it was an easy read, and it is a very efficient way of summarizing your quite large uh, bunch of work. So I, I was really impressed, and so with the presentation, I found that easy to follow. So compliments first. Um, one of my questions would be, can you explain a bit to us the status of the research field? Started in a situation, you showed us one graph from, from, from Hanson, but I mean there were other models in the discussion like exponential, linear, um, some called it general, the other one, and some also said it's more surface dependent, and in the end, I mean your model is a surface dependent model with extra assumptions. So could you explain a little bit why the others didn't work or what yeah, the yeah, field yeah. was? I, I had actually a figure to show that because again, I think it's better to, to look at the yeah, figure than... Not for us. <laughs> To the left, uh, your what is happening? Okay. To the left, you have uh, those different uh, uh, functions you 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 talked about here. So that's that's a range of models that has been used in the past, from linear over different curvatures to exponential, and also a power exponential to uh, to explain the mm -hmm. delay in the evacuation rate uh, for crustaceans, for example, and. Uh, uh, so that so, so that was the the the, the variety of models mm. used at that time when mm. we started. We started yeah, yeah. The same but, but time. So why didn't they work? Why couldn't we continue? Yeah, but that's, mm. Yes. We have actually a John's data to the left, which was the first. On, it was practice the, the direct motivator, yeah. But let's say because it's not designed for the purpose, so there's a little more variation. So let's look at the, the right one. There you can see if you feed a sage with uh, with uh, meals of different size here because of uh, different numbers of uh, Norway pounds. Then uh, on the upper uh, left, you see if you try to fit a linear uh, function to that. It would uh, underestimate the evacuation of uh, large uh, meals and the opposite for, for the small ones. And if you're looking down uh, the lower uh, left, the opposite is the exponential, which uh, overestimates large and underestimates small uh, meal sizes of the evacuation of them. The surface dependent have a little of the same as, uh, as, the, as the exponential, and that's because what you uh, really uh, mean when you were, t uh, oh, that was uh, the point in the literature, was that an, uh, uh, it was implicit that uh, with surface it was isometric uh, degradation of the play, then you end up with a power value of two thirds. Exactly. And, uh, but, but it is not uh, 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 isometric, uh, a play becomes thinner and thinner, so, uh, and that's why we end up with the square root model up there to the uh, um, yeah, I, I totally agree. But there are some species where you actually, from empirical work, get an exponent, which yeah, is pretty... Also, fish prey. I also have a, a figure. Oh, very good. Uh, well prepared. Uh, <laughs> How comes you know? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, small, uh, some small fish prey are not uh, homogeneous in that... Uh, uh, they have the trunk, the compact trunk of muscle, but they have a head and a fins and yeah. so on. They constitute quite a large part of the of the of mm. the total mass of the mm -hmm. prey, and they are easily, easily more easily digested than mm -hmm. the compact trunk. Yeah. So you have an initial uh, higher evaporation mm -hmm. rate, so you get a deeper curve. Yeah. yeah. 
And uh, so, and that can be explained. You can see that because uh, the actual fitted power value decreases from a very high value, means a, a, a more curved, uh, uh, more curved curve. <laughs> uh, but when they uh, for larger uh, play, uh, the ratio between uh, the, the the compact trunk and the other mm -hmm. parts. Uh, I agree with this is a nice interpretation, but there are also species like herring, for instance, or spread, which have different uh, prey um, types, not they don't have this one big fish in it, but they have like say 3,000 copepods in the stomachs. And for, with those we also get empirically exponents yeah, yeah, which yeah, are pretty... I think I can explain that too. Mm -hmm. That was in, in the final for, for the future uh, yeah. uh, uh, studies. I, I, uh, I uh, uh, plead for, for more studies there. Mm -hmm. Because when uh, a prey becomes uh, small enough, mm -hmm. then the autolysis, the inner digestion of the prey becomes uh, as much as important as the, di uh, 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 the digestive processes on the surface. So you end up rather with a mass-based uh, model, which means an exponential rather than uh, a surface-based. So you will have something in between, or maybe mm -hmm. for, 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 for soap plankton, it may be uh, a straight uh, uh, exponential uh, uh, decay of, of mm. the And our experiments, or the ones that I know from publications, where people have actually tested what kind of exponent would fit best, yeah. you actually get this uh, surface thing, the 0.67, close to, yeah. even with the, with the small food. But uh, the, I, the explanation makes sense. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. That was the, uh, the, the model thing. Then I have another question that is more related to the direct gastric evacuation studies. That is the temperature effect, the Q10, that, that you, yes, you, you are yes. familiar with my question, I guess, because, <laughs> because of our review process. Um, but I would still like to have it in a more general way. Um, you use one exponent for different species, for cod and whiting. So you basically say there is a kind of generalized gadoid model that would <laughs> serve for both. But the, ecologically speaking, the cod is a northern species, so it's going to very low temperatures in, in its range, while whiting is much more a southern species. So uh, you could expect ecologically that they have a different temperature yes. Uh, yes. response. So in, in absolute terms, mm -hmm. but if you look into the temperature range of each of the, mm -hmm. of the species, then I would say that in, cent in the central part of, mm -hmm. of this uh, total range, you <coughs> have an exponential uh, uh, effects of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the temperature. But in the lower part, they seem to see, uh, they seem to see some dif uh, difficulties because it's, uh, you have a very large Q10. For example, Sylvanus and Allied uh, estimated Q10 for, for your uh, data in the low end from one to four degrees or so, and they ended up with a, a sky high uh, uh, value of the Q10. So, and that is probably because of uh, problems with, uh, with uh, ionic transport or the cell. Totally yeah. agree, and yeah. also the upper, the upper yeah. that you have the same applies yeah. to, the, to the upper part of the temperature curve. Well, I think yeah. there's more consensus because on the upper oh, part yeah. this was already Tyler, I think, in 1970, showing the, the uh, optimum, kind of, yeah. and it, yeah. you confirmed with your experiments. Yeah. I think yeah. the upper side is, is, is okay. more. Yeah. I would be but more it could easy. be uh, be yeah. situated a little different uh, yeah. uh, uh, for the different stock, cut stocks uh, okay. as a so response we, to, we to the range they experience. Yeah. Uh, so the, a probably an adaptation there also. Yeah. And then I have a final one with regard to temperature. 
in the Baltic, uh, you showed that these, there are these um, small-scale situations that, that you can explain much more in detail with your methodology, uh -huh. but they also uh, uh, transit through quite a range of temperatures. You showed a winter situation, if uh, I exactly. uh, correctly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they also do it in summer, and then the temperature differences are even more pronounced. Yeah. Um, what to do with the temperature coefficient in this situation? I, what I did in this particular yeah. uh, uh, study was that I could see that uh, apart from those uh, those uh, rates into the water column, they were standing in a, in a, in a, around a, 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 a oxygen saturation of mm. around 65%. Uh, Yes, and, and uh, 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 relatively high temperature. So mm -hmm. I think it was a trade-off between uh, high temperature and low oxygen levels. So and they stand there for yeah. seemingly most of the time. So mm -hmm. I used that particular uh, okay, temperature so down there. You didn't yeah. include these, these bursts? No, no, no. no. I, uh, yeah. you, you remember against Peter, a colleague of mine, who was very interested in this particular aspect for, yeah. this, for the pelagics that, yeah, that yeah, live yeah, there. Yeah. And he made a setup, an experimental setup, where you could actually simulate these, these oscillations within a day of temperature. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's unpublished. But uh, what came out is that, that the, when they change between two temperatures, the overall physiological response is rather to the higher temperatures. Yeah. This is not yeah. exactly yeah. the mean. Yeah. So somehow they seem to benefit from being yeah. Yeah. for some time in the warmer yeah. waters. Yes. And I can, I can see mm. that's, that that's uh, something that, that, that should be, be, be done for, for, for pelagic. But as I could see, the, mm. the rates into the water column of cod was very short compared to, to that day. So, so that like was quite quite yeah. 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 But and also yeah. uh, and also it, it showed up that mm. uh, the estimated ingestion <coughs> times was nicely <coughs> they, they gave biological meaning. So so mm. so I'm not that afraid of uh, of, uh, of but you have a point. Yeah. But you have a point there. Yeah. Okay. I think that's uh, that's my part for the moment, George. Um, yeah, um, good. Uh, I'm a bit now um, outdated when it comes to these uh, coefficients. Um, I know that it's the temperature effects are difficult to measure mm -hmm. because uh, I remember that my code were normally kept at low temperatures because that was what we had. Yeah, yeah. And then I had to press them. I had to create wa hot water yes. and, uh, and they were uh, uh, difficult to to keep 12, 13 degrees in the water in Tromsø okay. for a long time. Yeah. So the core had to adapt quickly. Mm -hmm. So I would say that my data at high temperatures is not not very reliable because okay. the cods okay. maybe were like two, three weeks only mm -hmm. at that temperature. So, so um, but I was aware that of that, that the, 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 the lower temperatures are dominant in my set of mm -hmm. data. So. Mm -hmm. So you can nearly treat uh, the, the, the high temperatures as outliers because there were so few of them. Uh, uh. So what I did then was I resampled, as far as I remember, I resampled my data set so that all temperatures were more or less well represented. Mm. So, so that the cold temperatures were not over represented. Mm. Okay, so that, yeah. So, but uh, that, that's an issue, you know, uh, maybe here it's easier because you are in a mid temperature range, so you can both warm up a little water, the water or cool it a little uh, bit. Yes, and you have very good, good facilities in here for doing that. To that, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so I, I, I could only increase it because I had enough cold water. <laughs> yeah. So, um, at the time, I made a review of the f physiology of digestion and evacuation what was out there um, and it was dominated by medical literature and uh, mm. on humans but mostly on mice uh, one quite knew quite a lot about control and modeling mm. um, how it was the status nowadays of 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 the literature on uh, on control and modeling of uh, stomach processes. Have you have you looked at that? Yeah, I have, there's not uh, been mo much pros uh, uh, progress compared to your time. So no. not not as far as I can see from the literature. Yeah? Okay. Unfortunately. So okay. So more on appetite regulation, you know. Appetite, but, that's, yeah. but that's very uh, complex in fish compared to mammals, for example. Yeah, yeah. So I think that also applies to 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 uh, evacuation rates. 
okay. a lot of different uh, inhibitory and uh, uh, stimulating uh, yeah. factors there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or some of another reason you should expect that mammal maybe to be more complex, but uh, if you follow the literature, it's more actually yeah. more complex in the in the fish. And if you're not a, a hardcore fishologist, you get confused. Yeah. 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 And they are not. not as, as, uh, very very clear uh, so, yeah. uh, conclusions from from those studies okay, at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and we probably in fisheries we are in a very special situation. We want just one rate, so right. that we can use it for everything. Exactly. And mm -hmm. in medical literature, they are interested in other uh, other information than just one rate. Mm -hmm. The rate for them doesn't yeah. matter really. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. So, but I was expecting to know something more about control, mm -hmm. what is out there, no? That was it. So, apparently there's not much new. No. No. Okay, so I can go into hibernation, <laughs> hibernate for um, 30 more years <laughs> and wait for some <laughs> and development. <laughs> This yeah. is considered research of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Somehow yeah. history. So it's yes, my turn again. Yes, you can. Yeah, I would yeah. like to switch the topic a little bit to this episodic capacity story. Yes. Uh, you're probably expecting my questions because probably, I, yeah. I, ha I, I, was, uh, I had the honor to review also this paper. So, and I wrote some of these questions already as a referee and Niels didn't follow the advice that I got. <laughs> <laughs> don't brush up, uh, brush off everything that the graduates uh, say. Rather try to make it more like, uh, yeah, we refined it a little bit here and there. Yeah. Now you just kind of I, I think I did something to... Yeah, you were uh, very uh, friendly in general with me, but you basically said, <laughs> so I, 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 I took this letter, <laughs> prepared myself for this meeting here, so I'm sorry <coughs> you get it again. Uh, the one thing is Whiting has sexual dimorphism, yeah. and that is something that we both did not consider in those days. I think it was forgotten knowledge. I don't know if you were aware, but uh, later I, we discovered in another study that there was historic literature on this. Yeah. But I, it was from the 50s, I wasn't aware. Yes, yes. So your experience, did you ever check whether there no, was No, 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 not at all. Yeah. Not at all. And, and my uh, mm. reply to you was also, let's uh, work together. So <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> For the future. Yeah, yeah. So th there may be an issue with writing, and that it re relates to the second question that I had, um, and that is um, in, in our um, extreme situations that we sampled in the field, we uh, encountered writing that had stomachs as high as 19% of the body weight, which yeah. I think is in the range of your cot. Okay. Yeah. But in your thesis, um, yeah. from your data, you deduce that the, the writing have a lower c maximum capacity exactly. for this. Uh, uh. And your argument was um, that uh, we specifically targeted extreme situations, yeah, so yeah, that yeah, would not be yeah, so representative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I dug out another one for you, yeah. and that was not a not a hotspot, a feeding hotspot. It was a different sampling exercise that was actually yeah. more brown shrimp related. Okay. So there was no feeding hotspots, nothing. We just uh, collected samples from cruises that people would bring to us mm. to look for the number of shrimp. Yeah. And I went into these and I found in 400 stomachs there was one with 19% body weight. Mm -hmm. So there were smaller whiting. Yeah. So could it be that, that, that the data set somehow missed this or that you really need more data to like in the Norwegian case? I think that it would always be good to have more data to yeah. because we, we could also have underestimated the capacity of uh, the the Baltic, uh, the, the Bermsey cod of some reason. Mm. Uh, so uh, I'm open for everything. That's just mm. one thing when you look into the body cavity of a cod mm. and compare it to the body cavity of whiting. You, you really see difference in the capacity, the volume capacity. If you just blow it up. Or yes, or even, even, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, so I think the, the uh, I think there is a difference because of the of yes of the the, 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 mm -hmm. the difference in in uh, which would probably mean that cod could go even further then yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah exactly because exactly these, these, yeah, yeah. these are observations that only, I only have the weight yeah. but it was up to 90% yeah. of the body yeah. weight which is quite yeah. impressive for for a fish like this imagine yourself you have 20% yeah. of your body weight in the stomach yes this is amazing yes, yes I, I i also you know measured the length and uh, and uh, the length uh, specific weight of the stomach contents uh, of the stomach in a cot and the oil way and yeah. it indicates the same that the uh, cot should be should able to, to expand more yeah. and we have here if you see here here we have the in the center we have uh, those uh, those uh, fish i i looked into 
uh, in, in, uh, in the paper. And uh, as I see, there is a, it's a continuum of uh, fish that, uh, that do not swim, uh, swim so much around. They are, they are either they are, they are sit and wait uh, uh, predators like the anglerfish to the left. So they are just sitting, waiting for, for, uh, for, for prey to come by. So uh, then they have a large uh, digestive capacity, but not uh, the aerobic capacity is not uh, used to, to, to move around. And in the other, uh, in the other extreme, you have uh, mackerel and tuna, with uh, with uh, mm. they very uh, yeah. uh, very. Where would good the herring swimmers. be? A herring or a spread? I, would I really it? don't know because yeah. I, I'm yeah. only yeah. S uh, thinking about uh, predatory fish, yeah. so I, I really don't yeah. know. I have a so, question yeah, for yeah. you. Just just guess. Yeah. What do you think is the maximum stomach content again in percentage of body weight that a spread could get? I really don't know. I don't what, know. In the field, how much would it be in the field? If you observe them in the field, it's just I don't massive. know. I have no experience with, yeah. uh, at all with, we with have, spread. We have managed in experiments to yeah. get up to 16% of the body weight in yeah. the spread okay. in a continuous feeding system with, yeah. with uh, yeah. Artemia. Yeah. Okay. And we were really, really surprised. Yeah. We have one study with, with uh, herring, also the same size, they also take up to 10%, yeah. which you never, I never yeah. found something like that in the, yeah. in the field. But is that related to that? That can't be related to variability uh, or unpredi un unpredictable variability in, uh, <coughs> in feeding opportunities. So, <coughs> so there must be another reason for for this uh, high capacity. Uh, I think it's uh, they have a snatching rate that the maximum snatching rate is, is really fast. They can okay. take like yeah. one per second or so, yeah. and that is an adaptation that they have to exploit patches. Yeah. So if they are encountering something, then they really can, yeah. can uh, take yeah. yes. huge amounts in yes. a very short time. Yes. And obviously, if you leave them in such an artificial patch, that doesn't stop until the, the, yeah. the yeah. blind sack yeah. is completely full. I'm just thinking, could it mm. have something to do with uh, uh, predation risk that they feed uh, only in a short time yeah. intervals, where well there the are reduced predation risk, and that's why they have to fill up uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. when they have the time for it, and then go down and, uh, and uh, uh, avoid uh, predation. That could be one explanation. Okay, that was the episodic capacity. Then we move on to the purpose of all this gastric evacuation is in the end to do the consumption estimates as you, as you also illustrated in your talk. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing that I'm still puzzled with as, as a person who also tried to apply these things and that is your, your mixed meal story with hard-shelled species in between. Yeah. I, may, I may not have fully uh, uh, understood this, how you apply this then in the field, so, so I give it to you as a question. You have stomachs that are filled with both these hard-shelled crustaceans and fish, yeah. and you have samples from the field and you want to estimate these, these uh, consumption rates. Yeah. But in your um, Hard-shelled evacuation model. There is a time constant. There is a time variable in yeah, the model. Exactly. But yeah, exactly. How can you circumvent this in the by by uh, by uh, letting uh, the, the people who are analyzing the stomachs uh, uh, write whether it's in digestion uh, in digestion uh, state one or two, whether the, there is a, a, an intact carapace or whether uh, it is cracked or for, for shrimp that you have the cephalothorax is, uh, is uh, detached from the abdominal part. But I would assume that you get a mixture of all these things. So in the end you have, I mean, talking about a larger sea and you have samples from all over, so you have all kinds of digestion degrees yeah. of these crustaceans in yeah. between. So but you, you're treating each stomach, you know. You are, you are doing the equation rate for each stomach. Ah, so okay. So you yeah, do it yeah. by, by stomach yeah, 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 for yeah. the specific stomach you use the condition of the shell to say it's on that exactly, side or exactly. on that side. Yes. Oh, okay, that's yeah. makes, that makes sense. So now I learned something. Okay. Good. Okay, so I think, no, there's one more under consumption. Um, you mentioned bioenergetics, uh, and you also elegantly explained that they can't survive without gastric evacuation because mm -hmm. they get it all wrong. Um, but nevertheless, could you uh, tell us a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of using bioenergetics yeah, versus yeah. gastric evacuation? So Certainly, yes. One, one, uh, one, uh, yeah, those who plead, plead, plead for, for, for uh, bioenergetics, they say that, uh, that uh, the, the figure you get out of bioenergetics is an, uh, 
is uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, the, the the results of a, a long period. So you get better results of uh, of uh, predation rates that way. While you in the in this case of I, I use here, you you need a lot of uh, evacuation data, and if you're not uh, sampling representatively, you are bad off simply. But uh, and that I think the two mm. they complement each other very nicely because you can use the bionetics uh, to to check the total food consumption rates uh, obtained by 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 the, mm. the, the evacuation method. Uh, but the bionetics in the end or eventually they also need stomach data to allocate the energy requirement into it is, it into the different tray. So it's only, yeah. but I think uh, yeah. bandages is very fine to, to, to mm. get an, an, uh, an independent estimate of the total uh, food consumption rate. But okay. I think the bandages yeah. people, they, f they forget that, uh, that uh, the stomach content are just as, uh, as uh, important as, uh, yeah. yeah. That's the one thing, that, but there's one thing with biogenics that, that always puzzled me how, how to deal with it, and you must, you must be able to answer because I think you worked with your colleague Jürgen yeah. Ries Westergaard on this activity part. Yeah. In, in biogenics, uh, the, the difficult part is that, that you have to estimate somehow the, the activity side, and can you elaborate a little bit on... Not on that, all, that it mm. is simply the dark hours. And uh, yes, so so it is. It's it's it's, it's a problem. Solved. It's it's yeah. no no not at all. Maybe with DSTs and uh, with with uh, accelerators and uh, and everything. I, I think DSTs will uh, will uh, that is able uh, in one or another way mm. to 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 measure the the the. Uh, the swimming speed and also the accelerations and the de decelerations. Yeah, because there are these two yeah, schools yeah, yeah. that say what, that these spontaneous movements yeah, are yeah. far more uh, yeah. energy uh, expensive than yeah. the continuous swimming, exactly. even exactly. that is not so. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I think, George? Yeah. It's yes, 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 yes. Oh, so, um, the good news is that we passed the half now. The bad news is that we are going to get very speculative now. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, so, um, but feel free to, yeah, to, to speculate. To speculate. What you say here does not leave this room. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, now if I was, uh, I was going to use your model, I would not be totally convinced by the experiments you made. In the, I would uh, I would need more testing. Yeah. And now I wonder. I mean, uh, and and uh, the, because uh, the testing you show there is like one two meals and then over. Yeah. After two two meals, it's over. And I mean, after two meals, it's quite easy to predict. Mm. Uh, you know, you can't it is not the other models. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, yeah, 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 even yeah, so, it's yeah, easy. Yeah, 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 if you go to three, four, yeah, five, yeah, ten yeah, meals, yeah, yeah. then it starts to get difficult. Yes. And um, how? I can think of two ways yeah. to make this kind of long-term steady-state uh, test. Yeah. How can you think of a way of doing it? Yeah, yeah I can. Yeah, I yeah? can. Yeah, yeah, by, by feeding uh, the constant time intervals over a very long time to see what is uh, what is the uh, equilibrium uh, stomach constant at, at that time. Mm. Does that does the model uh, explain that? But didn't you do something like that in your... Uh, I think I did, but yeah. I, I, at the, the some time uh, I lost, uh, I had no more money, so I had to quit. <laughs> <laughs> so I went for another okay. job, uh, and uh, the date is still around. Uh, uh. So, but so, uh, uh, can you just give some details of how yes. you do it? That? That, yes, yeah, no, yeah I, I can show you actually, uh, uh, to turn it around, in, in, in feeding experiments, where I, uh, I compared well-fed fish with a starfish, yeah. Uh, then I, 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 uh, at least uh, the stomach content they leveled at uh, at the level of of uh, of, uh, the, the, uh, of the of the uh, binge feeding stomachs with binge feeding from the barren sea. So you see, they seem to equilibrate at a, a level that is. Uh, yeah. But maybe if the barren sea they are underestimating. I, I don't know, <laughs> of course. But I can show you here. Yeah. 
to the left, that was uh, performed two. They are pilot experiments. Uh, I have to tell. In the top, uh, in the top, uh, in the top uh, figure, you, you you see the actual food consumption, long-term food consumption rate, as long as it as it, as it was with the pre starved fish. With the with the pre starved fish compared to well fed fish, and you see that the, the pre starved fish they have a higher consumption rate. And then I used the model to uh, to estimate uh, the daily level of uh, of uh, of uh, stomach contents after they have been fed. And you see how, uh, for the start fish, they, they level up uh, uh, at a uh, at a yeah they have a level comparable to to this episodic uh, capacity of uh, of the of the balance so sea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Estimate episodic capacity. Yeah. So the point here is that the, the dots are, are model predictions. Uh, yes, they are models. Because you didn't observe the stomach all the time. No, no, we couldn't. So you we could just, do. Yes. knew how many they yeah. were taking in. Yeah, and the, that, model was yeah the top uh, figure uh, mm. tell us yeah. about uh, the actual food consumption mm -hmm. rate, and then I used the model to to uh, estimate yeah. the, the the current uh, stomach contents. And you see, they, and, and I think it's also interesting because it, it shows that uh, it, it levels out. So they, 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 there is a target level of something uh, uh, regarding the, the, the volume uh, uh, they, they fill up in the stomach, and the same for for the for the uh, well-fed fish. It's still not good enough. No, no, I, I know. Yeah, <laughs> so we how would you do what, it yeah. well? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, uh, uh, you're yeah. estimating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. But that that must be, be to, to, to see if uh, if uh, the level. Yo, know, I could, but I, I could have done because it was a pilot project, and that was not the the aim of the project at all. And we had problems with the water quality for once, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, pre-starved fish. So we, we had to end it earlier. But you could have uh, have looked into the stomach content to see if we actually. The 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 the, the, the models the models uh, uh, mass in the stomach was the same as uh, as what we observe when we end end up the yeah. experiment. Yeah. So that was uh, at least one one way of doing it. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's uh, a good way. Um, I think I tried. I, I I don't think I've treated that data because I lost the job. Yeah. But um, I was feeding the fish in a tank, yeah. seeing how much they were eating every day yeah. for weeks. And I knew exactly how much each fish. There were many, but I could watch them. Okay. Uh, yeah. Exactly how much each fish yeah. had, and yeah. I was feeding yeah. them different yeah. types of food. Yeah. And and then after a few two weeks or so, I sampled all of them, yeah. Yeah. and and tried to predict, yeah. use the model, to predict the real consumption. Yeah. Yeah. I think you. I think you published that. Did you I? had a, you had a figure where you 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 plotted the the observed versus the predicted. Oh yeah, but that's for, for no. short-term experiments. It, it was only so short-term. Short okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, I mean, uh, for many of these models assume when you are applying assumes a, a steady state. Uh, uh, you know, your uh, model uh, uh. assumes a, a steady state. So uh, so I would try to reach a, a so-called steady state by feeding the fish for uh, a long time, yes. one week, two yes. weeks, yes. following its fish. Uh, and but we are not using the steady state in nature because of the variability in uh, in. Yes. What are you using? But to, when yeah, you I, I think you you can use the steady state to to, to, to test the model. I agree yeah. on that. Yes. But we are not using the steady state in in uh, in in. Uh, food, uh, in estimating food consumption rates. No, we will assume that the, the fish are in steady state. The, the, to be able to multiply the stomach content by a, uh, a digestion coefficient, yeah. you have to assume that the, the stomach is in a steady state. I really don't yeah, understand. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. You have to assume. So, but we know that they, they probably are not in a steady state, yeah. but yeah. on yeah. average yeah. they could be in a yeah, steady yeah. state. Yeah. That's another point about yeah. when we are talking by, yeah. uh, about the individual stomachs, yeah. should a uh, fish be in I am assuming that's in the... Yeah, when you apply the model, you have to assume it, yeah. So, um, so that would be one way to do it. Ah, you know, ah, the, ah, uh, ah, and you can do it, uh, here you did it for one type of food, but you could also mix ah. shrimps, uh, ah, yeah, sprat yeah. and ah, all yeah. that, ah. and that would be an even more demanding ah, test ah, ah, on your... Ah, ah. And then you'd see the stomachs and try to recalculate with your model, if 
uh, if you're calculating how far you were, how biased you were in relation to a real consumption. And I think nowadays with all these cameras, GoPro that can be underwater and all that, if you feed the fish, you can see exactly which fish. Because I was working in big tanks, uh, it was difficult to see because they yes. they fight for the food, yeah. but it's easy to see which took the food yes. and all but that. But then you need a very narrow uh, variation in the f in the size of the, the food items you no. present. You just need to know exactly how much you gave. If your model is really robust, you just have to know how much you fed. So. Because in nature, nothing is like standardized. No, no I, I know that. I know so that. you can give yeah. a good big prey, small prey, one shrimp, one lobster, one anything, and your model needs to be able to recalculate without bias. Okay. So, of course, the model will never do that, but we will know what is the yeah. margin, yeah. Well, how far yeah. we are yeah. from... Uh, yes. the, the, we don't have perfect models, so, yeah. Yeah. but that would be one way to do it. Another way to do it would be have you got any? <laughs> no, not, not other than I, I okay. told you before. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I was looking at your uh, article 13 and I was saying, well, this is, I would like to work model, huh? model this fish. And, uh, and you can, uh, with an individual base model, mm -hmm. you can model each individual fish huh? and you can make it migrate up and yeah, down. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and with your model, you, 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 you you simulate yeah. what's yeah. the condition of each fish yeah. Yeah. and and try to understand from those model with those modeling exercises mm -hmm. what what would happen with a fish that is here half of the day mm -hmm. goes up feeds goes down again how would the stomach content look like mm -hmm. after 6 7 hours yeah. Yeah. so you can try to uh, simulate uh, that, simulate that yeah. Yeah. and then you go and catch the fish yeah. and see does that does this is uh, my hypothesis good or not? Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. uh, so these models, individual based models, are very simple to use, uh, don't require big mathematics, uh, anybody can use them, mm -hmm. and they are extremely good to test hypotheses, uh, uh, you know, um, or to raise new hypotheses. Mm -hmm. So I think that I was looking at it and said, this is the perfect example, uh, uh, particularly uh, because with these migrations yes, yes, and yes, all yes. that. And in the first stage, you could uh, use it to 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 un uh, understand this uh, about uh, somehow to not to calibrate but to validate uh, 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 the, um, uh, uh. the stomach contents. But in a long, uh, you could prolong and look at other factors like the survival or the evolutionary value of of, of this type of behavior. Uh, uh. So you could take your uh. model. I see uh, the advantages. Yeah, yeah it yeah, could yeah, it yeah. Could, could raise more uh, interesting hypotheses and, and contribute to understanding of the um, of, of this uh, fish. That would be very very interesting. Another thing that you should do always when you have a model, and um, and that I learned from Ray Beverton. He once tell, told me, uh, it's no point to have a model if you don't use it in nature. You know. And um, my, um, my question is, have you ever done a sensitivity analysis of your model with a, uh, a set of data, a real set of data, apart from the one you did uh, with, uh, with the seals? Uh, did you ever use your model for, for instance, with the 1991 multi-species uh, data? Uh, no. No? Oh, no. Because it could be interesting yeah, yeah, to see, yeah, yeah, make a sensitivity yeah, analysis. Yeah, exactly, I, I quite agree, and I've been thinking about it, but yeah. it has been a little outside uh, my, my, my working uh, yeah. Uh, area. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because my interest is are in the fisheries yeah. management, yeah. Yes, yes. and that what yes, would be yes. the consequence yeah. if you change, let's say, one of these parameters of yours, like temperature, mm. uh, if you increase it by 10%, how would that yeah. reflect later on the estimates of consumption exactly. uh, and how would I take that in consideration later in the fisheries uh, management uh, process uh, you know uh, so that would be very interesting uh, uh, for to, to 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 communicate to the managers mm -hmm. that my model is not perfect and you know uh, these would be the consequences of mm -hmm. uh, so slight bias uh, uh, so it would be interesting to, to, to know 
but I think it's good to get feedback from, from guys like you uh, working okay. with the management to get ideas about uh, how we can we can uh, supply new knowledge because I, I, I regard myself as a supplier to, to people like yeah. you. So so it, it's very nice with this this feedback. Yeah. feedback. Yeah. Yeah. But here in, yeah. in, in Copenhagen you have all these yeah. modelers you can ask them. Yeah. Yeah. Can you yeah. Yeah. pick the data from ninety yeah. one? Yeah. Exactly. Use yeah. my model yeah. and tell me what is yeah. the, the most yeah. I mean, of all these three parameters or four you have there, do you know what is the most sensitive? Yeah. Do you know? No, I, I try. Which I, one yeah. gives more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so for Something, you know, for example, the predator size is, uh, is yeah. one that uh, yeah. can give rise to, to quite uh, some yeah. high yeah. 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 deviations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it could be, for instance, that yeah. then you have to be very careful about the predator size and, and make when you collect data that you are very concerned about reaching many different predator sizes. If it is the temperature that is very sensitive, uh, then you should be able to measure the temperatures. Uh, that would be... Uh, and the problem with that is that it is so complex as it is, so we need, I said, we need more uh, uh, fundamental knowledge before we can we can do that uh, so that it gives yeah. sense I think yeah. 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 but for every model one yeah. should do a sensitivity yeah. analysis yeah. Yeah. so that just for your curiosi yeah. curiosity yeah. Yeah. and to take I mean I was very very shocked because uh, when I developed this model which you you, you proved to be wrong uh, still the, the IMR in, in Norway was taking like one one million tons of capelin from the fishery and I said, but this is my fault, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but just for the yeah. curiosity of it, yeah. what is, uh, if, if your model is wrong, yeah. what is the consequence exactly. of it? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think also it's therefore uh, that the assessment biolog biologist is uh, a little reluctant to, 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 to go into multi-species business. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. I mean, you, uh, you have to face it. It's uncertain. But it's the best you can do, yeah, yeah. so Absolutely. you should yeah. not be afraid for, of it. But it's interesting that the other modelers uh, play with your model and tell you mm -hmm. what is the effect of yeah, it. Yeah. So sensitivity analysis of any model is yeah, very important. Yeah, yes. Okay. And um, yes, so I think I'll give you a break here because Axel uh, is in this business of multi-species model. Yeah, but just, we are already in the discussion. And I have a more general question. Um, since it's about applications, and you must have followed, I think, a little bit what this multi-species work kind of produced. Uh, a little so bit only. Yeah, but uh, uh, at least that's the question. I mean, what, for, uh, what do you think were the main achievements, the main lessons that were learned from multi-species work? In the beginning, when it was introduced for the first time, uh. there was a bit of a shock among the managers. So I don't know if you are familiar with these. What were the things that were coming out that really changed the perception of the system? That is that uh, you can't uh, you can't just fish one one uh, one uh, stock and then assume that it, it wouldn't affect the other stocks. So that's yeah, a, the call. Living, that's a call. They were living the, in the Babylon yeah, yeah, world yeah, where, yeah, where yeah, everyone said yeah, if you fish less, yeah, you catch more. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. But if you yeah. do that in a predator system, yes, yes. it may go the yes, other way around. So yes, yes, and it changed the the, the ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one of the basic ones, but then this has been ongoing for 30 years yeah. since then, or at least 25 or something. Mm -hmm. What else came out? What's, what's the important thing? What, why do we have to do it? I think primary cause of that. Uh, uh, I don't I well, uh, uh, I guess O group mortality is one of the issues that really. Oh, no, now we go into details. Yeah, uh, okay. But okay. Yeah, it's not yeah. so philosophical. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, that's right. And you have contributed to that in some of your your uh, publications. For example, that biting can uh, wipe up, uh, wipe out uh, quite a lot of uh, old groups caught in uh, relative few hotspot situations. Yeah, but that no one wants to know in the modeling world because these are extreme events that they can't model. It's a bad exactly, thing about exactly. this. Exactly. Um, but it shows that uh, that. Uh, uh, not taking uh, uh, multi-species interactions into into uh, consideration, you you can end up with some very odd mortality rates. It brings you to the question of, of sampling. I mean, half the, the story is sampling the stomachs mm -hmm. to, to be able to combine that with evacuation rates. Uh. And then in the sampling, if you encounter these extreme events, so what do you do with this? We try to show that they are relevant uh. and 
what would be your, your take on this? Um, you have a sampling and then every year and then you get these extreme extreme values. Huh? So I know Niels Dahn in those days he made a square root to get rid of the extreme values. Uh, uh, so that uh, was the easy uh, way. Uh, that means he said they are not relevant, they are like errors. Uh, uh, but what if they are not errors? But what if you are in a world that is 80-20? It means 20% of the events make 80% of the effect. Mm -hmm. Yes. How do you address that in the sampling? How would you yes. I, I think it's very, it's uh, I think it's uh, almost uh, impossible, uh, especially regarding the, the the amount of sampling. I, just, I don't think you overcome the problems, and so so I don't think the recent the the, the, the present way of doing it uh, uh, is uh, is uh, adequate. Yeah, it's somewhat frustrating. I mean, your work on this uh, sporadic capacity yeah. highlighted a lot that yeah. this is yeah. a key yeah. process yeah. that they we, are really, we really need. No, uh, yeah. More uh, basic knowledge uh, in, in local in local situations, and and then uh, scale up to population mm -hmm. level. I think it's the only way forward if we really mm -hmm. uh, want some solid uh, estimates of predation rates. Okay, I think it's your turn again. Yeah, yeah. So we are getting well trained in this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yes, now we have one question which is not very speculative, it's very practical, and one that is speculative. And it has to do, the first one is about spreading and communication. Um, nowadays, it has always been good practice, but nowadays we are under a regime where we are forced to publish in open access. Mm -hmm and we are forced to have uh, open research data. Uh, we are forced to share our algorithms. Mm -hmm. um, have you done that? Yes, in the, in the latest papers, because I think uh, you need to do it, in, uh, at least for, for ISIS journal. And also in the MEPS paper, I also did that. All that I did, in, and I have that in supplements, both uh, printed and also uh, uh, files uh, in, uh, in, in those. Uh, okay, uh, so that's very good. Uh, Good, good. So you mean that all your uh, uh, experimental data are now available? No, uh, only f from the latest papers, but uh, they also extract data from, uh, from, from earlier. But it is definitely my attention before I'm leaving uh, the business here. Yeah. I'm old now, you know. So uh, to, <laughs> to, uh, to, to, to do that for the rest of the data too, to make it uh, accessible to the uh, scientific, scientific community, like you did uh, yeah. with your data. Uh, I hope you, the, the next 10 years, you do that. In the next two years. OK, so. that's good. And, uh, and, and now it's, um, it's a good practice. Yeah. Now it requires a little bit of extra work. Because you have to go to your drawers and find all yes. data and all that. But I have a file. Uh, it's not a problem yeah, for me. Yeah. So yeah. So, but uh, my question is not that. It's my second question, the follow-up question, is different. Is imagine that I am um, a young researcher in I don't know Spain, France, and I have 10, 10, 10 observations, and then I have your set of data, and you have mine set of data. How what, what you say there? But now it's very easy yeah. to 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 calibrate your data with other new sets of data. Yeah, how would you the model. Yeah. how would you recommend now this student in France yeah. or who have ten data ten data or eight yeah. Yeah. or okay. eight data with yeah, yeah. Yeah. eight okay. eight yes. points with yes. A, yes. a different species yes. a different prey. Yeah. I think you could uh, use the model if you if you know the stomach links. I would advise him to get some uh, measures of stomach length of the predator yeah. because it seems to be a very good predictor of the digestive capacity of the fish. Okay. So with that settled, then we come to temperature. So uh, which temperature did he use uh, in relation to the, to the temperature range of yeah. that particular predator yeah. to see if it's the uh, exponential range? Uh, then you, I think you should use uh, this uh, coefficient of 0.08 uh, as a start, at least. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, he also needs uh, in the energy density. I think that's important, very important, that energy density of the prey yeah. is measured. But that can be very easy, uh, done very easy. You don't need, uh, even need a bump carometer, for example. Just uh, measure the, the percent uh, dry, dry weight. It's uh, so The percentage? Percentage of dry weight. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because it's 
so so closely related to to the energy density oh. because uh, fat uh, is uh, replacing water more or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but especially if it's a fish, not I'm only talking about fish prey. Yeah. yeah okay. Right, yeah. Okay. But yeah. what is if this person also has other? Yeah. Then uh, and you must see. Okay, he's, I have some shrimp. He yeah, has some. Yeah, yeah. He has some shrimp. Probably. I think shrimp. They are more or less. Uh, when I compare my uh, my uh, the, the my results on uh, on the uh, on the uh, brown shrimp with the uh, with the uh, shrimps from the the northwest Atlantic with the guys from Canada, then they are not that different and much of it can be explained by the ash content of, uh, of uh, yeah. the shrimp. So yeah. it's also easy to, to get yeah. uh, ash, ash contents of the yeah. prey. And also, but then you, the organization of the car parks also means something. So shrimp is one way. I think you have to divide crustaceans into different, different taxonomic groups. So we have crabs uh, with, with very, uh, very uh, uh, compact carapace, and then you have the shrimp. And uh, krill, for example, they are, they are evacuated more or less in, uh, with the same rate as fish of the same energy density. So there's a lot of uh, generality in it. So you should use the same variables that you use. That's, that's, um, that's I mean, that's obvious because that's the best knowledge we have. Uh, uh, uh. So, so, but how could you combine his data or her data with yours, with mine, with Axel's data? Have you got a, could he gain from combining his data to with other people's data? What do I mean by combining? You said it's very easy to calibrate your model with yes. the new species. No, I would calibrate it by, 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 by the stomach length. That was as well one calibration. And uh, then the prey energy density if it's, uh, uh, it's fish prey. So mm -hmm. you more or less have the model except for the temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, but could you effects. combine the sets of data, put it together somehow? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you could do that by... by, by uh, I actually did that on the different predators in the North Sea where I just uh, used the, uh, the stomach length and, uh, and uh, the, the, the temperature, uh, used the same uh, uh, coefficient, coefficient of, the, of the temperature effects and, uh, and uh, the energy of, 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 of the prey sand eel because that was a, a specific prey. And I don't remember, sh should I show? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Here, for this, those different uh, predators, uh, you have the, the yellow symbols shows this uh, uh, prey-specific rate parameter for, for sand eel. And you see that it differs between uh, those, uh, those uh, predator species here. And, uh, but uh, also the stomach length relative to the total length of the predator differs. So if you are using the stomach, uh, length instead, you get almost the same uh, uh, basic rate. So using the, st the, the stomach, and there they are also uh, they are also combined by, by the temperature and the, the, the. Of course, it's the same prey, but in principle, you could, as most prey are evacuated according more or less to the same uh, prey specific mm -hmm. evacuation rate mm -hmm. at a par parameter, you could do that. So mm -hmm. that would be my best answer to him. Mm -hmm. So. To, yeah. to, to try to do it. Yeah, it's good that you generalize. It's, yeah. it's very good. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was trying to get to something else. But this is one way to go there. But to combine data, um, we have now tools. You have statistics have developed a lot. Yeah. And you have methods that allow you to know, use a priori knowledge and use your data, even if there are few. But of course, the more you have, the better. But if you have few yeah. data, use knowledge from other people mm -hmm. to fit your own model yeah. and uh, and and that's what i was trying to okay. to, to yeah. reach yeah. Okay. so if a person has got very few observations but has got all your data mm -hmm. mine and axles and everybody's yeah. data yeah. 
it, it, that person should not just say, uh, okay, I'm going to fit the model my, with my few data. Yeah. They should make use of all the information exactly. that is yes. there. And, and, and especially the generalities, you know, you know, as a generalities, you know, uh, yeah. uh, was, I don't know yeah. if there are other methods of combining that. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's these yeah. Bayesian methods. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. 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 So yeah. that, yeah. that yeah. You, uh, yes. Yes. it's getting easier to use them yeah. and, yeah. and yeah. you yeah. use all this a priori, a priori information yeah. Yeah. And then in the end you understand if what does more weight, your yeah. observations yeah. or yeah. Yeah. the other people's observations to get uh, yeah. an idea yeah. there. So it's an uh, excellent tool to make what you're saying yeah. in a more um, objective way. Yes. Instead of just yeah. combining data yeah. with, yeah. with yeah. doing things uh, yeah. 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 objectively. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's what, um, and it's getting easier to do. So mm -hmm. you don't have to be a mathematician to no. do it okay. so any longer. So that is okay. Then we we get back to the speculation and actually to evolution. And um, there is this animal that is uh, for me it's 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 one of the silliest animal in nature. But it's also <laughs> a very a very fit animal. That's uh, cod, uh, Atlantic uh, cod. It's uh, a stupid animal, and uh, but it's a very successful animal. And you have the, the the sea is full of them, so somehow they must work well. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, there will not be so many, mm -hmm. and not such a high biomass. And they but are not that stupid. They are very clever. You can see that in experiments. Uh. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Their life is about feeding, eating. Yeah. Yeah. So they that's all they are. Th they think about is eating, and uh, you can keep them in tanks. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. good too. So, but it's not like the smartest fish. Does not do. Does not jump waterfalls. Does not, you know. It's like just like they call it the chicken of the sea, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, <coughs> but evolutionarily, the, it's 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 a very fit uh, organism. Definitely. And you just look at the stomach of it. Yeah. Now let me make an image. You have a Ferrari. It's a car, and you've looked at the engine of it, the combustion chamber. <coughs> but that does not make a Ferrari. Uh, a what? A, a Ferrari. Oh, a Ferrari. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. A racing yeah, car. Yeah. And you've looked just at yeah. one piece of the yeah. of the engine. Yeah. But a Ferrari is much more than that. Yeah. So can you tell me? So I think it's a, it's a perfect machine. Mm -hmm. Cod is a perfect machine. Yeah. And can you can you relate the engine? So this the the, 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 the what happens in the stomach to the lifestyle the um, metabolism yeah, yeah. to distribution mm -hmm. uh, migration yeah. um, metabolism lipid metabolism mm -hmm. benthic and pelagic feeding reproduction that's of a lot course. of things <laughs> no a ferrari is a big car yeah, yeah, and yeah, you have yeah. to yeah. think about the brakes you have yes. to think about the yes. color yes. why, why the is the ferrari red and yeah, the exactly. why yeah. is I, what I, I understand your question yeah uh, Cots, uh, it, it's rather an ambush feeder than it is a, a cruiser. So therefore it needs a relatively large uh, uh, stomach to compensate for not being able to, to, uh, to swimming around finding uh, schools of fish. Uh, so if you're looking into the aerobic capacity of a, of a fish like cod, then a lot of the aerobic capacity is uh, used for, for the digestive processes and less for for the f uh, for swimming around, like the, you, you mm -hmm. saw this continuum up there. So uh, that's part of it, and uh, the same also if you're talking about uh, accretion of uh, lipids, for example, it needs uh, it needs to be able to to, to accumulate uh, uh, fat both for starvation periods and for for uh, for spawning. But it's not a, 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 a f as feeder. It's not swimming a lot around. It's quite stationary, actually. At least that's our experience in the North Sea, where they are using. But you were in the Barents. You were in the Barents Sea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm coming to that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when they uh, when but when uh, spawning time approaches, then for Barents Sea, they need to migrate to an area that is more suitable for the eggs and larvae. So therefore, they migrate down to the Lofoten to to spawn. So there, they, they are swimming down. Uh, so, so and that's uh, and the, it's actually the same in the North Sea. Uh, uh, many of the, of the subpopulation, at least in the past, 
they they were swimming up to the Norwegian trench where mm. they, they where they are spawning. So it's a little uh, little of the same. So uh, large distance swamp is due to to uh, migration to suitable uh, spawning grounds, but the feeding grounds is is seemingly better in the in the Barents Sea. So so they swim back and and f and, and feed there. Yeah. So what what do you think is the 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 one factor that is most important to that in the ev evolutionary st story or history of cod? Uh. What was the one factor that really shaped the biology of the fish? It's a, it's a opp opportunist. In, it can feed on a lot of, of prey. It's a fast uh, growing, so it's. Very f growing out of uh, out of reach of uh, many other predators, so uh, that's at least, and it seems to be quite adaptive to, to different temperature ranges. Also, uh, uh, yeah. So think about northern Norway. What what is special about it? The, uh, uh, in general, about the life, that's uh, the the low temperatures and. Uh, Feeding conditions, maybe, yeah. and you have this. Uh, this uh, they have this uh, this uh, choice about uh, f uh, feeding grounds and 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 spawning. Uh, I don't know what you are thinking about. Maybe, yeah. I can't yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. How is it no northern Norway now? How how is it now? With now how is it in summer? In in the Barents Sea. Yes. What um, is the difference between now and summer? Oh, between winter and summer. Yeah, it is that in, by summer they are feeding up there, and in the winter they are uh, my, uh, they are uh, spawning at low yeah. yeah. So my feeling is that cod is a, a species that adapts perfectly to the change in seasons yeah. and the unpredictability yeah. of 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 the climate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and yeah. and that they have the feeding ground there and the spawning ground yeah. there yeah. Yeah. and all that. That's the, but, but I would that say that the that seasonal that variation. Yeah. And that's in a way yeah. what determines the lipid metabolism. Yeah. How is it the lipid metabolism of cod? Compared to other fish? Or uh, yes, non gadids How do you compare it with non gadids for instance? That they have it in the liver and not, for yeah. example, if you are comparing with, uh, yeah. with, uh, with uh, uh, salmonized as yeah. salmonids, yeah. Yeah. Yes. it's in, in the liver. Yeah. Yeah. And the liver just grows, grows uh, uh, enormous uh, 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 in a very short uh, season yes. uh, because you don't know what's coming next year. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yes. yeah. How is the spawning of the cod? How the reproduction of the cod, do you think, how they adapt to the seasons or to this unpredictability? Yeah, it must be the, 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 uh, the, the of course, the temperature for the, for, for the, for the eggs and, and, uh, and uh, the larvae, but also uh, it, there sh should be a max with the uh, bloom of uh, zooplankton. The, the, the larvae should have mm. uh, good uh, feeding opportunities. Mm. So that's some of the, uh, the, the habitat quality in, in a spawning uh, uh, region. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's 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 a, it's a fish that uh, produces millions and millions of yeah. eggs, yeah. and one year they can just die all of them. Yeah. Yeah. But they will try again next yeah. year. Yeah. So it's a fish that is geared to this so, so unpredictability uh, yeah, 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 and the yeah. seasonal variation. Yeah, yeah, okay. So the, the seasonal variation, one season there is no food, it's cold, it's dark, mm -hmm. the next season is light, mm -hmm. it's warm mm -hmm. and there's food. Mm -hmm. So all the biology of this fish mm -hmm. is geared towards that. That's mm -hmm. why they have these mm -hmm. big stomachs, mm -hmm. because they, they have to feed as much as they can mm -hmm. in a short period because they don't know what's going to happen next week. Yes. Yeah. And also because they are not so, uh, they are not swimming so much that you have a, can have another strategy yeah. where well, with a good uh, swimming ability you, 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 you can yeah. circumvent the, the variations exactly. in the feeding opportunities. I think that's uh, very important uh, to mention. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That difference between but the, I don't think they chose to be slow swimmers. I think no, it's, no, a, it's a part yeah, of the yeah, whole yeah, yeah, yeah. system. But they are not, uh, they are not searching a, a, a very large area compared to, for example, a tuna. No. I think that... Uh, they are cruisers, they are not fast. They are cruisers. Yeah, 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 yeah. They cruise fast, but they not very fast. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a fish that is perfectly fit for the environment mm -hmm. they live in. 
in a, uh, and that's why you have so much of it, mm -hmm. fortunately. Mm -hmm. For us, that I'm Portuguese, I eat a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, so, um, and reproduction, digestion, even the color of the fish mm -hmm. is, 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 is fit. It makes it fit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a good ample flavor. It's a good color. Yeah. Yes, and it can feed on the bottom. Yeah. It's got this barbel, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. but it's also a pelagic mm -hmm. predator. Yeah. 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 Not, great, not, a, not a pack yeah. predator, but loosely organized. Yeah. So it's um, so it's it's an interesting example of of um, evolution mm -hmm. and our life history mm -hmm. adapts how it adapts to the to the climate and. Mm -hmm. So that's that's um, and the metabolism it can sink its metabolism mm -hmm. quite strongly in winter mm -hmm. and just don't feed yeah. in winter if you don't feed it for weeks or months. Mm -hmm. But many fish have have the same ability. So Pardon? Uh, many fish have the same ability. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So yeah. So probably fish that are adapted to these seasonal variations, you know. As you said, tuna fish, they go after the food, they go, but then they have a totally different strategy. Mm -hmm. They have to swim quickly, uh, all looking for the food yeah, all the exactly. time, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. No, yeah. I think we have the last question, isn't it? Yeah. From yeah. our yeah. list? And yeah. Last question? Yeah. yeah, our last, and maybe others, we don't know. So, surprise questions may pop up. So, my, my last question is, well, I always ask my PhDs a one million euro question, but that doesn't apply in your case, so I, I rephrase it a bit for you. Um, but first, give me an introduction why I ask this question. We have now, let's assume from your work, this gastric evacuation business is under control, so that is well said. But then the whole idea was to apply it in multi-species uh, models and, and make the management better and, and mm. improve the stocks and the sustainability. Mm. And if we look into what happened there, well, that was not so satisfying. So, I mean, you have a model development that was ever more complex. They included stochasticity. They have even ecosystem models coupled to this, this Atlantis mm -hmm. thing. I, I heard it was applied in the Baltic and so on. But then the, the management reality, I mean, in the Baltic, I don't have to explain. It's a bit sad. The North Sea is, for cod, is also not that great. Um, so, obviously, something went wrong. And now, now it's my question. Uh, you don't get one million, no, you get a research, you get a contract from your government and, and your duty is, you get well paid, and your duty is to reorganize research in DGU Aqua in such a way that the species interaction research is, is really uh, being more effective and, and, and able to solve all these problems. You have a free hand, so you can close departments and make other ones big. Um, what would you do? I mean, things went wrong or not that well, and now it's your task to mm -hmm. to improve. To how, how many this. years do I have to do that? <laughs> uh, for, for the development of the concept, you have one year, and then oh. for, for the execution, you have some more years. And uh, money is not an yes. issue, but it's constant. Yes, I'm not very comfortable with, with uh, improvements within that uh, span of years. I think we sh we, if it really should do something. As I, I said before, then we should uh, be much wiser about uh, basic knowledge about interactions. So, you, in yeah. which department would that be? That growth in 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 our uh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, uh, department a, exactly, uh, Kahn's, uh, uh, department. Yeah. What? Kahn Edelwangs, my uh, my companion, Arctic and Oceans. Yes, that's the name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, Arctic, you would say. Basic biology, then. Yeah, I, yeah, but I can't, I can't see. Stomach cells. So, yes, but you can, you can, uh, yes, but that's not a task for us alone. It needs to be internationally coordinated. Okay. But of course, we could uh, take the lead. Take, take, uh, 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 try to promote uh, uh, more uh, okay. sampling because it is not enough. Uh, uh, as it is uh, right now. Do you think it makes uh, sense in the yeah. North Sea to run a multi-species model if the only data is from 1991? No, no, not at all, because the, uh, the composition of uh, the fish stocks has uh, changed so, so much. So then you should also have something about preference. If preferences, for example, are, 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 are changed uh, there, so uh, yeah. How do you address it? I mean, obviously something needs to be done. Yeah. Uh, then you need, if, if you say, okay, 
the, play, the composition uh, of the ecosystem has changed, then you need uh, another stomach gear. Yeah. And can you so? And then can you use that to get wiser about uh, things like preferences, for example? But again, I think you need uh, basic knowledge about uh, the, the uh, uh, predator-prey interactions. Otherwise, you you, you won't uh, get uh, get uh, get wiser about uh, how to do. Yeah? Okay. But I'm not in that business. I think uh, I'm not uh, a, little, a little uh, censored mm -hmm. by, by that. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you are retired. You could openly say what, uh, yeah. <laughs> what is needed. You know, fire the, the department leader? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. No? So, we are slowly coming to an end of uh, this defense, of these defense proceedings. I have not received any notification of questions from the auditorium and neither from those uh, watching uh, the streaming channels. And therefore, uh, the defense proceedings will close in a little while. I'd like to end by thanking Professor Nils Gerner Andersen for his enlightening presentation and the defense of uh, his uh, thesis. I'd like to extend a warm thank again to the assessment committee to the opponents for their hard work before coming here and for uh, making uh, this a very good uh, defense. Thank you very much. Now, before I end, I would like to say a little bit about what is now going to happen. So, when we end in here, the assessment committee will withdraw. Uh, they will discuss the defense, the answers they have received to their uh, questions, and come up with their recommendation on whether or not to uh, recommend uh, the Doctor Technicist degree be awarded to Nils Gerner Andersen. Now, this uh, recommendation will be forwarded to the uh, Academic uh, Council, and at their next meeting in May, they will consider it. And, but I can say that uh, if the opponents are in, in positive agreement on the assessment on the defence, the uh, the Academic Council will automatically bestow upon Nils Gerner Nielsen the degree of Doctor Technicist. When we uh, leave this room, the Department of Aquatic Resources will be the hosts of a small reception uh, just outside uh, the auditorium, and then I encourage all of you uh, to uh, join us uh, out there. And with that, I'd like to end uh, the, defense, the defense proceedings and thank all of you for your attendance here today. Thank you very much.